today we're making a well-loved British cookie called Millionaire Shortbread. It's a sturdy shortbread topped with caramel and chocolate. It's kind of like the original Twix bar. <laughs> we don't have to choose the right or left I one. I know. Though. We get to eat it all. Whole pan. <laughs> it's a triple level threat in terms of cookies. You've got that shortbread bottom, you've got kind of this toffee caramel filling, and then chocolate right on top. Mm. So it's millionaires because it's rich, lots of rich ingredients. Also, you know, it's a little bit more expensive to make than the original shortbread. So that has something to do with the name. So this is two and a half cups of all purpose flour. I'm going to add a half a cup of granulated sugar and three quarter teaspoon of salt. Now you'll see salt going into just about every part of this recipe because millionaire shortbread can also be a little too sweet. So I'll whisk this together. All right, so that looks good. So now we're going to add melted butter. So this is 16 tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're just going to pour this over our dry ingredients and then work it in. You're gonna see it's gonna turn really, really thick. But since we're using melted butter and not creaming butter or cutting in cold butter, this is going to be a lot more sturdy. And we wanna make sure that we get any of those flour pockets on the bottom of the bowl worked into, it's kind of a dough at this point. So you can see how thick that is. Yeah. So let's bring it over to our pan. Now this is a nine by 13 inch pan. I've gone ahead and lined it with a foil sling. Very important, anytime you're making any kind of bar cookie, which this is, that's two pieces of foil and we've shaped it so that one goes right across and the other one goes right in. It's gonna make it easy to just retrieve it out of the pan and slice it. So I'll crumble this over just to distribute it a little bit more evenly at the start. You can smell that butter. Mm. Oh, it's a good day. <laughs> So now I'm gonna use my hand and just press this out into an even layer so that our next layer, which is the caramel, will also be nice and even. This is looking pretty good and it's going to continue to even out as it bakes in the oven. All right, so now before we put it in the oven, we take a fork and we're just going to make little marks about an inch apart from each other. If you didn't do this, the shortbread would sort of bubble up in places and you'd have these big ugly lumps, not a nice even shortbread. Mm -mm. All right, so this is going to go into a 350 degree oven. It'll stay in there until the top gets nice and light brown. It's gonna take about 25 up to 30 minutes. You'll also notice that the top will feel nice and firm. Oh, it smells so good. Look at that mm. beautiful shortbread. Beautifully even and golden. So I'm just gonna take my hands gingerly. It's hot, but I just wanna make sure that that surface is nice and firm. Now we do wanna compact this a little bit because later on when we go to slice it, we don't want it to crumble all over the place. We know we're gonna get some crumbling. We don't want too much. So we're gonna use just a burger flipper, as I like to call it, a big <laughs> long metal spatula, and press down in there. Now the spatula can get a little bit hot, so you might wanna grab the top of it with a towel. By the time you get to the second side, it gets really hot. Mm -hmm. And this is great because it's also going to compact right into those corners. All right, so we're gonna let this sit here. You wanna let it cool down for at least 20 minutes before you top it, but you can actually let it cool completely as well. Gives us time to talk a little bit about the caramel. Ooh, the good part. Yes, and this is almost, I like to call it a caramel toffee mixture because it is much deeper in flavor than a traditional caramel. And actually, we found that the recipes all start with sweetened condensed milk. This is one 14 ounce can. So sweetened condensed milk because caramel can be very chewy and sticky and this makes it a little softer, so easier to eat. Exactly. Mmm, I give that to you. <laughs> <laughs> and we have seven ounces or one cup of firmly packed brown sugar. You can use light, you can use dark. And we also have a half a cup of corn syrup and that's really going to help the caramel stay nice and chewy. A stick of unsalted butter, eight tablespoons, just cut into small pieces, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Now we did find when we were cooking this that sometimes the butter would start to split and you'd end up with a kind of a, a greasy layer on top of the caramel. That it all had to do with how much they cooked the sweet condensed milk. So what we found is the more that they cook it, the more the whey proteins in the milk were broken down and they're needed in there to keep the butter together. So we're adding a half a cup of heavy cream which has just the right amount of whey proteins and our butter will not split. So heavy cream makes a foolproof caramel layer. Exactly. So we're gonna put this over medium heat I'll stir it every once in a while. It's not like a traditional caramel that you don't want to stir. We want to cook this until it reaches between 236 to 239 degrees. That's going to give us exactly the right texture of caramel. That's going to take anywhere between 16, maybe up to 20 minutes. All right. We have achieved the right temperature anywhere between 236 and 239. It's it perfect. smells amazing. <laughs> Oh, it smells like toffee and a little coffee. And ooh, mm. that's going to taste good. It's going to taste great. All right, we want to get this out of the pan. We're going to pour it right onto our crust. That looks so pretty, <laughs> having you pour it right on like that. 
We're just going to smooth this over into the corners. You can use an offset spatula if you like. And I just want to finish smoothing it out. So good. All right, we do want to let this completely cool. That's going to take at least one and a half hours. And then we can move on to the chocolate top. The caramel is set. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's completely cool <laughs> and it's nice and firm. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a nice mirror finish. Well, we're gonna cover it all up with chocolate. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so we're starting off with six ounces of bittersweet chocolate. And we've chopped this very fine, that's very important for our tempering method because we want this to melt evenly. So we're gonna microwave this at 50% power and I'll stir it every 15 seconds until it's just melted. We don't want to overheat the chocolate at this point. I'm going to pull it out when the bottom of the bowl is just slightly warmer than my hand. All right, so this is looking good. It's just a few pieces of chocolate that are still unmelted in there, but as I stir this, I know that they're going to melt right in. So this total melting process up to this point is only going to take one to two minutes depending on the microwave. So this looks good, and now we're going to add more chocolate. This is two ounces of bittersweet chocolate, very finely grated. Yeah. So we're going to pour this in here, and we're going to stir this in. Now, these tiny little particles of chocolate are going to melt in very easily. And since we haven't really disturbed their structure, the beta crystals are still intact in here. And that's going to set off a chain reaction as the rest of the chocolate cools down. And it's going to help to temper our chocolate. So if this looks like it's not actually melting all the way, you can always take it back to the microwave only for about five seconds at a time until it is just melted. All right, so that is beautiful and glossy and fully melted. So this is going to go right on the caramel. And it's just a thin veneer of chocolate. This is not really a chocolate dessert. It's a caramel dessert. It is really fun to watch you make this. Every layer just looks better and better. Oh, so good. All right, so now I'm going to take an offset spatula. I love these tiny little ones. It helps get into all those little crevices. And we're going to quickly spread this over the top, getting right to the edges, into the corners. So this is going to go into the fridge just until the chocolate is set. That's going to take about 10 minutes. It's time for the payoff, Julia. Yay! <laughs> 10 minutes in the fridge, the chocolate is just set. So now we're going to get it out of the pan. And thanks to the foil sling, that should be very easy. I love this sling trick. And it works well for all sorts of bar cookies and brownies. There we go. Peel this back. And now I'm going to lift it up, if you wouldn't mind taking that foil away. You bet. Woohoo! Ooh, it's even prettier out of the pan. It serves one, <laughs> if only that were true. <laughs> we're gonna cut these into smaller pieces because a little bit goes a long way. And it's very easy to do, but you do wanna use a serrated knife. I like to score through the chocolate first. So I'm gonna cut it widthwise or crosswise right in half. There we go. So now each of these gets cut again in half. Just a little bit of the sawing, gentle. And we'll go ahead and cut this one in half as well. So now, each one of these gets cut into 10 pieces. And this is where you really want to go slow here. Here we go. Two for you, two for me, because mm. you're going to say, oh, I only want one, Bridget. <laughs> and then you're going to say, where's my other one, Bridget? <laughs> these are just beautiful. I mean, those layers are so nice and even. And like you said, not a thick layer of chocolate, just that thin veneer on top. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's just enough of that bittersweet chocolate. You're going to say it's perfect combination. <laughs> Mmm. 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 Shut the door. <laughs> this is really good. It's not only the flavors, it's the textures. Mm -hmm. It's the firmness of the shortbread and that caramel layer it has the perfect texture. These are simply amazing, Bridget. Well done. Thank you. So if you want to be a millionaire, you have to get your hands a little dirty and use them to press in a quick shortbread crust into a baking pan. A combination of sweetened condensed milk and heavy cream makes a foolproof caramel layer. Then the whole shebang is topped off with a beautiful layer of tempered chocolate. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, a top drawer recipe for a millionaire's shortbread. You feel richer already? <laughs> <laughs> Pay you in shortbread. Mm. Mm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.